Hello again and welcome back to the second part of this two-part video. In this part of the video we'll be uh, working with this image here to see if we can't uh, make something of it using levels and curves. So I'll take my lasso tool here and I'll select the darker part of the image here. Not very neat but not really what's uh, need at the moment. Okay, I cross there. And down and around. Let's see what sort of effect this is going to have. I'll feather it. Select feather. This time I'll feather it by uh, about 120, give it quite a, a wide range, let them fade into one another. There we go. Now I'm going to apply to this a levels adjustment layer. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have a look at the individual channels, see if I can change something there. See red, green. Blue, they're all lacking in highlights here. Uh, I'm going to take the blue channel and uh, I'm going to try and make the whole image, or at least the bottom part of this image, warmer um, by moving the mid tone slider across a little bit and taking out blue, giving it the yellow, which is its opposite. There we go, that's giving the sand a nice golden colour. And it's also giving it more contrast at the same time. Yes, I'm going to stick with that. Okay. So that's got the bottom half of the image sorted. Uh, as before, I'll control click on the mask to get the uh, selection back. Click on the background. Control shift and invert. Control shift I for invert. And now I've got the sky selected. Now, I actually want the sky to be darker. I can do this with uh, levels or curves. But uh, just before we do that, I'm going to try actually copying that sky onto a new layer and superimposing it over the uh, existing sky. I can do this by pressing Control J. Okay, so if I unselect these, you can see what's happened here is that uh, the feathered selection which I've got has selected the sky um, and put it onto its own layer here. Um, now if I change the mode of this layer instead of being normal, if I change it to multiply that gives us the same effect as uh, having two photographic slides, one on top of the other. It, uh, it multiplies them, it doubles the effect, it's like makes it darker. So in effect this will make the sky darker. Okay, that's giving it a lot more contrast, that's lovely. Um, so, I'm going to select this again, Control Select, to get our selection back. And, uh, on top of that layer I'm going to make another adjustment layer for the selection of levels there we go and I'll go into the individual channels uh, I'll, I'll see if I can't give some of this uh, yellowy color to the sky as well there we go that's quite interesting I think I'll give it a touch of red just to make it a little bit more exciting. And let's see what we've got there. Okay. I have to be careful now that the image doesn't start to look too abstract. Now that's not bad what we've done, it's a little bit strange. I'm going to try and just add a levels, uh, sorry, a curves layer right on top of it all. Uh, there we go, a curves layer. Just to see if I can't uh, 
make it look a little bit more natural There we go, just the standard photographer's curve. And I'll press OK and see what we've got. Now, just to make a quick comparison, I shall copy the background layer and bring it all the way up to the top. So that's our original. If I undo that now, you can see the effect there. That's our original there, and we've just changed it into this. So what I would do now uh, is just to straighten it out. So as not to lose these settings, just in case I still do want to go and uh, touch it up later, the, the way I'll straighten it out is I will press Control A, which is to select all, and then I'll copy it. Uh, but I want to copy everything I see. So if I press Control and Shift and copy, that's the same as... Uh, pressing copy merged and that just copies everything in sight basically and now I shall press control V and that comes onto a new layer and I want to do uh, straighten it up so uh, I'll press control all again control A select all uh, then I'll transform it with a free transform which again I'll use control T for control transform and this is the pivot point in the center here. I'll actually take this pivot point and I'll move it onto the horizon here, right onto the horizon. And I've already got rulers uh, on my image selected here. If you haven't, you just press View and Rulers or press Control R. Uh, if I click in here and drag down, this will drag a guideline down, which actually has just clicked into the center point um, and over here I'm going to rotate the image you see and the, the horizon is pivoting on the pivot point so I'll just move that so that the C, the horizon line, the C apply the transformation by pressing enter and now with the move tool selected I'll move that line out of the way and yeah that looks okay so we've got a, a funny edges to our image here we'll just have to use the crop tool so I'll go in and have a look how large the image is I think I know how large it is but just to check I'll look at uh, image size and it's 1600 by 1200 cancel that press the crop tool and here we are put in here in fact I've put it in before uh, you just type in here width 1600 by height 1200 and I'll start making my crop selection stretch it out as far as I can without getting any of this white in and now you can see that that has actually uh, magnetically snapped itself to the edge of the image if I press shift then that disables the magnetic snapping that's probably about as far as I can take it double click there and it resamples the image to uh, the same size of the 1600 by 1200 but this time it's straight uh, that's the completed image so we've taken it from that to that yeah, I think I prefer what we've just done there. Okay, well, that's it for this tutorial. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. You can find all of the tutorials at our website. That's photographybook.net. Uh, there's also lots of useful information about photography in general and some uh, photography books for sale as well. So, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.